Hey guys, it is me, Tammy Lowe, the Lazy Northern Gardener, on a Sunday. Wishing you a happy Sunday. The weather is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that sky. That's blue sky. That's the sky we usually typically have in Michigan. That's what we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have that in Michigan. Yes, 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 yes. Blue sky. Coming at ya. Coming at ya. Isn't that beautiful? But hey, I wanted to tell you two things. One is if you got an orchard. Do you have an orchard? If you have an orchard, you are going to want to do this very soon. Let me show you. Let me show you something. These have worked for us very well in our peach tree. I gotta go hang them very shortly. They keep the birds out. They're just rubber snakes. Rubber snakes. They have worked very well for us in our orchard. Give them a try. You might also try um, plastic owls nearby. And this is to keep the birds away. The birds from eating all of your peaches or whatever crop you're trying to grow before you get to them. You might try that. Worked for us. You do have to move them every couple days so they look like they're actually, uh, you know, working the tree. And you put them in, and the, I put these on the outside edges of the tree so the birds can actually see them as they are flying around. And they don't know the difference between real or fake. Um, they get a little more bold when they see the, the, they aren't moving. So move them around. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is um, this water trough pool <laughs> i know it doesn't look good very right now it's full of clean water we keep the tarp over it to keep debris out and and then um the wood to keep the birds from jumping on there and like falling in or pooping on it and things like that but one thing we do and i have to add to my pool i will show you this this is a um a chlorine filter um, floaty. It's a floaty. It's a shark fin, which is kind of fun. But it's a floaty. And I just add a chlorine tablet or two into the floaty. Let it float around. The water comes in and goes out of the holes that are right there. And I put a rock. Is my rock on there too? This is my little bag of goodies. I just put a rock in the bottom of the floaty to keep it upright. And I let it just bob up and down and keep our water trough pool nice and clean. Two tips. And then one other thing I wanted to say is that a lot of the, um, if, it's, if it's got a fruit on it, it probably needs a pollinator in order to make that fruit. It's got to have a pollinator to take pollen from the male the, from the male plant over to the female plant. It has to have pollen a pollinator to do that. Whether it is a bug or bird like a hummingbird, could be a moth, it could be a bee, it could be a hoverfly. Sometimes ants are um, pollinators, but it has to have a pollinator in order to fruit. And that is going to include anything that is a uh, a squash family, any squash family. Summer squash, which is zucchini or yellow, um, any of the winter squash like butternut or pumpkin or acorn squash anything that you see those bright yellow flowers for that's needing a pollinator to do the job if you're not going to use the living nature pollinators to do the job then you have to do it yourself by hand if you don't want to have to keep doing it by hand then you have to encourage the pollinators to come to your garden to take care of it for you and you can encourage them with bright flowers. You can encourage them with water features. You can encourage them with the, uh, the types of plants that they enjoy being around um, that have a lot of pollen. But then if you invite them to your yard, you can't be killing them. Don't be killing your pollinators. You're not gonna deliberately kill your pollinators, but guess what? If you are just randomly spraying insecticide because you see a bug and you don't know what it is, 
it's probably going to kill an, or affect or kill the pollinator as well. So you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not doing your neighbors any favors. If you get your lawn sprayed and it has any kind of insecticide in it, you're probably affecting the pollinators. And if your pollinators aren't pollinating your, your fruits and vegetables, you're not going to have them. There's only a couple things I can think of that are not affected necessarily by, um, by lack of pollinators. And that would be like corn. Corn pollinates with the wind. Um, tomatoes, they don't necessarily have to have a pollinator. You can tap on the flowers and it will self-pollinate. Um, obviously, lettuces, they don't need pollination because they're not producing fruit. The leaves are the fruit. But again, if you want any kind of fruits and vegetables where you actually produce fruit, squash family, uh, melon family, your orchards, um, Oh God, you name it. Any, again, berries, berry bushes, they all need pollinators. And they need a healthy environment to be in in order to continue to be your pollinator, okay? So please, 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 if you're dealing with bug problems, figure out which bugs you have. Exactly. Be very specific. If somebody says that is a... Um, a... Oh gosh, a stink bug. See if you can find out exactly which stink bug it is. It could be a brown stink bug. It could be a green stink bug. It could be a marmorat stink bug. They're different and they affect different things and they may have to be dealt with differently as well. So when you can, use good practices in your garden. Keep your gardens clean from debris if you can. Clean up in the fall so things don't stay there over, over the winter time. And then try to pick off the bugs manually or with like a sprayer that we consider manually too, a straight sprayer. Or try to encourage other bugs that would come in that are predatory bugs to handle those bugs for you. So you're not spraying chemicals. Because not only that, not only are you affecting the pollinators, but it's going to get on your produce. And that stuff is going to get ingested by you. And, and I don't want you getting sick. I'm sure you don't want to get sick either. So that was just my quick Sunday thing. Um, this last week has been, I've been doing a lot about bugs. And I still have a couple more things to do. And I will post those. Next week, like I said, the focus is going to be more about um, roots. I'll teach you a little bit about roots. How they work. And um, root related things. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, go ahead and please like my page or follow me. If you haven't checked out my Instagram, I am on Instagram, The Lazy Northern Gardener. I'm also on, I have a YouTube channel and that is The Lazy Northern Gardener as well. And, uh, you know, if you go to YouTube, please like and comment on things. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content. I try not to make it too long and rambly. Sometimes it's long and rambly. Sometimes it's a conversation between you and me. Sometimes you're sitting in my passenger seat in my car and I'm having a conversation with you just telling you about different things. Um, but if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. Please share with people, other people, and see if they might get something from it too. If you're looking for alternatives for your chemical spray things that you are putting out, then can't reach out to me and see if we can come up with something different. And I, you know, and I, uh, my hands on my hip. <laughs> I do that subconsciously sometimes when I'm like, mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, which I don't mean to be like that with you. I just want to tell you that like sometimes these things that they want you to spray on there, uh, like neem, it comes from a specific tree, but it is, it is chemically derived from this tree. There's a chemical process involved in getting in having that extract. And the same with like, uh, per, I always say this wrong, per, perinthia, permethia, <laughs> something like that, which comes from chrysanthemums naturally, yes, but there is a chemical process involved in that. So, um, <sighs> bugs are going to bug. And sometimes you have to plant more crops than what you think you're going to need or more flowers than what you think you're going to enjoy. And sometimes you have to deal with them manually. Sometimes you bring in the 
the um, beneficial predators. For example, a beneficial predator, what is, what is one of those, Tan? One is a praying mantis, two is a hoverfly, um, three are any of the parasitic wasps. So those are kinds, some of the kinds of things to keep in mind. And all of them are, well, two of them are attracted to flowers, but specific flowers for the hoverfly, because it doesn't have a really long tongue. It just has a short tongue. So it likes flat flowers that it can reach. Um, and then the praying mantis, if you have environments that are, um, that are non-sprayed, the praying mantis can hatch out and it will stick around, especially if there's predators. Ladybugs like to eat aphids. But again, if you spray your aphids or you're putting chemicals on your plants, the ladybugs aren't going to stick around because it's going to affect them. So anyway, Tammy Lowe, the Lazy Northern Gardener, and I hope you have a great Sunday. Love you guys, and I'll talk with you later. Bye.